All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. And uh, I have a I have an insight that came from Sorel Kara. <laughs> and I want to share it with you. All ears. You know how some people say the glass is half full and some people say the glass is half empty? Yes. Since Sorel is an engineer, he says, the glass is twice as big as necessary. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> that would be my husband. 100%. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning, Atlanta. Good morning, Southeast. Good morning, East Coast. Good morning, West Coast. Good morning, wherever you are. Thank you for being here. Thank you for opening your calendar. Thank you for moving things around, for getting your coffee earlier, getting your coffee later. Whatever you're doing, thank you for being here. It is not a small thing you're here, and it is not a small thing you woke up this morning. It truly is not a small thing. Let me tell you how many things are against you waking up this morning. I don't even know why I said that, but I said that. Thank you for being here. Andrea, great to see you. It was so lovely to see you on Saturday. Tara, you were amazing on Saturday. I can't stop talking about it. It was just so great. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, we had this unbelievable event, Reconnect 2022. And we got to keep doing that one more time and one more time. It was just beautiful. Having said that, we're going to get into today's conversation. Good morning, Sorrel. How are you? Good morning, Jill. I am the way I say I am, and I am grateful, elated, and expecting miracles. I like that. Why yeah. not? You Why not? Say. <laughs> Andrea, good morning. Thank you for being here. Mm. Two questions for you. Where are you, and what time is it? I am where I need to be, Jill, which is right here and the time in this watch either digital or not digital it's now time is now the only one love it thank you Andrea. thank you thank you tara one question for you one thing you're grateful for and who are you going to hug today i am grateful for the an open mindset a growth mindset i've had that on my heart lately and today's a little slower. It's Juneteenth, and I have some free time, and I think I'm going to make an effort to hug my neighbor. How about that? Why not hug the neighbor? Right. <laughs> Thank you, Tara. Sorrel, good morning. Today we have a, I think it's a really good conversation today on Money Mondays. Money matters, right? And, you know, there are many things that matter in life, and one of them is money, you know. It's critical to have that appetizer. I'm telling you, it's really critical. So, Ra, what what's today's conversation about? Today's conversation is a really juicy one, Giovanni. Now, uh, raise your hand, virtual or physical, if you love the result. If you love having results in your life, you know, I, I, we, we're fond of saying that life runs on results. As a matter of fact, the world runs on results, and you and I, inside of this question, what could you be saying that puts a ceiling on your financial goals? When, when we look at our financial results, when I look at mine, I always used to think that my financial results are a direct result of the things I do. So this question is inviting us to look at life a bit differently, to look at our relationship to money a bit differently. Perhaps it isn't what I do that gives me my financial goals or my financial results. Perhaps it is what I say, what I've been saying, or what I'm saying right now. So we're making, this question is really an assertion. We're asserting that what you say has everything to do with your financial goals, the goals you set, 
and your financial results. Maybe, maybe they have nothing with what you do. So let's unpack this a little bit, Gio. What do we mean by saying? Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, thank you, Saro. So one of, the, um, one of the things that you're saying that I like to expand a little bit so that we can get the conversation built on today. So the, the, today's question is, what could you be saying? So you look at look at the the, the your, your money in your bank account in your savings account, or look at your the money that you make at the end of the year. And th this is the inquiry: What could I be saying? What could you be saying that keeps a ceiling on your financial results? What could I be saying? Now, normally, you know, normally whenever you know I speak to someone, it's mostly uh, this question is mostly geared towards looking at what am I doing that gets my financial results? It's usually looked in that direction. What am I doing that gives me my financial results? What Sorel and I are bringing today is a new angle, critical angle that we say is going to make a profound impact in your financial results, which is what could I be saying? that keeps my financial results the way that they are. What could I be saying? You know, one of the things that we, we, like to, we like to create constantly at the Daily Huddle every single morning is that your speaking, the manner in which you speak, gives you your life. How you speak gives you your life. Hey, Jill. Go ahead, Sorel. Pause one second so we can bring in the question that we ask every morning. How are you? And we always answer, I am the way I say I am. So it is that saying that we're talking about. It is that power that's inherent and resident in what I say about my life, what I say about my circumstances, what I say about my money that we're talking about. So what you say does give you your financial goals. And given that what you say gives you your financial goals, it also gives you your financial results and your actions. So the actions don't come first. The yeah. actions follow the same. So most of us, I would say, I dare to say that most of us uh, don't look at our thoughts the way that we think as a function of our speaking. We look at our thoughts as our thoughts, just I have thoughts. But we want to bring this conversation into this new angle that you're saying, what you say gives you your thinking, what you're saying consciously or unconsciously. That's what we're creating here. So I'm going to give you an example, uh, and then we bring it to the now. So there was a there was a point where I, I was waiting tables. I used to wait tables. There was a point. And um, I used to say, it was in some degree, it was in my thinking most of the time, but I would say it every now and then, every now and then to my peers. I would say it, I would say something like this. This is as far as I can do in my life. This is as far as it gets. I used to joke about it. I used to say it. And I used to think about it. This is, this is as good as it gets. For me, this is as good as it gets. Given where I was coming from and the circumstances that I was in at some point, I said, this is the ceiling. This is as good as it gets. Let me become the best waiter I can be. Maybe if I can go to a higher end restaurant, I can make more money. Maybe. And so I did. I went into the most expensive restaurants in Atlanta. Maybe what we say gives us our financial results. Maybe. So well, anything for you on your movie, in the movie of your life? You know, in the movie of my life, most of you, if you don't know this, I was born in Haiti. And uh, uh, the neighborhood I was born in, the country I was born, 
uh, I was born in very, you know, very poor conditions, right? Uh, the house we lived in, when the hurricanes came, the roof would fly off, would rebuild the roof and all that good stuff. So I was, I was raised always thinking about this. And that's what I've been saying. I don't want to be poor. At all costs, do everything I can to not be poor. And by that, notice I never said, do everything I can to make money. No, it wasn't that conversation. My conversation was, do everything you can to not be poor. So here I am. Uh, our family emigrates to the United States. That didn't change that conversation. I'm still there. Do everything you can to not be poor. So I go to high school and I can't speak English. I am so afraid because I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to be poor. I'm going to be poor. <laughs> and so I learned English. All of that in order to avoid being poor. And then I'm in high school. Guess what? I don't want to be poor. So I'm not going to stay in high school without learning a craft. When I got to my junior year, I decided to take the vocational course. I started to work in radio and TV. Why? I don't want to be poor. <laughs> I'm not going to be poor. If all else fails, I now speak English and I've got a trade. I can get a job, not to make money, but in order not to be poor. And that conversation, I didn't discover that I was saying that until much later in my life. So if you look at my trajectory from high school to college, everything I took on, I took on based on this conversation. Do not be poor at all costs. Do not be poor. <laughs> so what I'm discovering for myself is that I need, to, maybe I need to put a higher limit on what it is to be poor so I can make more money. So by virtue of this saying that is now conscious, but that was unconscious, everything I did was not to raise the ceiling on my financial goals. Everything I did was not to make my financial results any bigger than they were. Everything I did at every level of my life was to not be poor. So I remember uh, I, I got married. Well, not being poor when you're married is being able to put a roof over your family's head, feed them, and have a car and be comfortable. You know, as soon as I reached that level, I wasn't poor, I'm good. So take a moment and see if you can discover for yourself what it is you're saying or have been saying that could be putting a ceiling on your financial goals and your financial results. Mine is don't ever be poor. But as soon as I'm in my head, I'm not poor, I'm good. I'm done. <laughs> no more financial growth for me. One of the things that, that you remind me, Sorel, in, in sharing that, and then we'll bring it into, into the now, was also, um, I wasn't, well, I was going to college. I, had, I was a full-time student, international student, and I had three jobs. And I mean, I was working all the time and studying all the time, Monday through Sunday, right? I would just get mornings off or something or afternoons off or something. That was kind of the way it was. And my friend, Peter, I hope Peter listens to this conversation at some point. He was also full-time. He was also an international student and he only worked like 15 hours a week or two. And he made probably twice as much. And so, so I couldn't like, I, didn't, I couldn't get it. Why is it that I'm working 60, 70 hours a week and this guy is make, working 20 and making two, maybe twice more. And he was always relaxed and he was always funny and he, was, he would go to every, every uh, party and dinner and how did he have time and still make money? What was I saying, right? And a little later I, I discovered, so what do you do, Peter? And he's like, well, I'm an estimator for a painting company. 
And then I said, or oh, I could never do that. I could never do that. <laughs> so what I was saying was, no, you gotta work hard, really hard, a lot of hours. And I could never be an estimator for a painting company. I got tired of working 60 hours, 70 hours a week. And I went to work for the same company. Peter introduced me to his boss to be an estimator. And then his boss was the owner of this painting company. He had maybe about three or four estimators. And all of us spoke English. He didn't speak English. He didn't finish high school. He didn't, he didn't have any of, but he had this company run by people who were graduating from college. And he was, you know, an eight-figure kind of guy. And I thought at that point, huh, what am I saying? I didn't say it that way, but I want to bring it this way. What am I saying right now? What was I saying then that put a ceiling on my financial goals? And maybe I can see that other people are saying something else. The owner of the company, of this painting company, he had no high school education. He, had, he didn't speak English. And I don't know if he could even leave the country. But he was an eight-figure guy. What was he saying that I wasn't saying? Now, let's bring it to the now. And then we open it up for questions and, or comments. And what are you seeing in this conversation? This is mostly an inquiry, not a solution to anything. This is an inquiry. Now I look at myself and the consulting. And, then, you know, I have some pretty cool games. But I may be saying something that puts a financial goal. And so what I was discovering yet last night with Sorel about this conversation was I'm, I may be saying that as a consultant, I am not ready to work with large mergers and acquisitions. I may be saying that. I mean, I may not be conscious of it, but I may be saying there's a reason why I'm not playing the game of large mergers and acquisitions and helping with the, with the integration of cultural inclusion and, and cultural conflicts. Maybe I'm saying that somewhere. Yeah, and, and there's something critical to, to also discover in this conversation, Giovanni. It's not that what you're saying is wrong. It's not that what you're saying is bad. No. It is together we're aiming to discover that it is what we're saying that gives us our current financial life. It is what we're saying that gives us our, our goals. It is what we're saying that gives us our result. So the idea is not to fix the conversation, to fix what you're saying. No, that's not wrong. The idea is to look and see what you're saying. And when you can see what you're saying, something magical happens. You actually have the, not only the awareness, but the power to say something else. This is what this conversation is about. We're not fixing anything. We're not fixing you. We're not fixing what you've been saying. We're looking. We're looking. What could you be saying that puts a ceiling on your financial goals? Awesome. Thank you, sir. So let's uh, open it up for, for you guys. Uh, what are your comments, questions? What are you seeing for yourself? Anything you want to add, take away, yeah, but anything. Go ahead, Tara. So I'm still just trying to figure out exactly what it is that I say to myself. And I think I struggle with safety and security versus risk. Like when you take these risks to maybe step away from that residual constant income, to spend more time building what really you are most passionate about and believing that that can be your full-time game. Um, I don't have an answer to it, but I'm I'm trying to really succinctly define what's in my head. And I think that's what it is. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. <laughs> that's a great inquiry. Really great inquiry. Great place to look. And I really love what you did, Tara, for all of us. Is the idea is not, huh, let me go, like Sorrel was saying, let me go fix myself. It's actually, let me see what I'm saying. Let me see what I'm actually saying that perhaps is putting a unnecessary ceiling, if that's so for me. Yeah. Go ahead, Sorrel. You know G G Jill, uh, there is what we call reverse engineering, the discovery. 
uh, what made a difference for me was to look at the pattern of actions and the pattern of actions that I took. So it, it looked like this. I always said to myself, um, you know, when I was growing up, my parents would say, Sorrel, go learn something. Whatever it is you learn, people can't take away from you. And if you don't want to be poor, you better know a whole bunch. <laughs> and the more you know, the more money you'll make. So I spent a long time in my early life learning a whole bunch. And every time I learned, I didn't learn for the sake of learning. I learned for the sake of getting more incrementally not being as poor as I was before. So if you look at the actions you're taking and the pattern that those actions paint for you as you look at your life, you could discover the conversation. And it doesn't have to be the quote unquote right conversation. It's the exercise of looking that makes the difference. Mm. Sorry, I bet at some point you discover that knowledge had nothing to do with financial ceilings. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? I didn't discover that. It hit me like a two by four. Because <laughs> the first close friend I had that was a multimillionaire, <laughs> kind of like yours, never graduated from high school. <laughs> knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge and, and knowledge are different buildings. Different. And, Andrea. Thank you for sharing the space, guys. I wanted to share that, like Tara, I've been thinking about what else am I putting myself into this barrier? What else? Because I started this journey about almost two years ago. I was not financially uh, literate. I was ignorant at that time. And I decided to join Financial Peace University online courses and learn about it and asking my questions. And one of the things that I wanted to share is during that journey that I'm still questioning us of today because it's all about questioning is value equals hours. In, when in, the, in this transition of becoming an entrepreneur, you start thinking about that the value is the hours you work. And I'm like, but no, it's the value. Whoever wants to pay for my services as a value interaction. So that's one of the things that I'm still working on as of today about putting boundaries around the way that I think. So value does not reflect into hours. I only want to work for days a, a week. Well, and that's what I did this year. I only work for days and I've been doing it and I've been forcing myself to put boundaries. <laughs> about this question that is limiting me to become who I want or, or be who I not become even is the present. So that's one of the things that maybe when you have this question and you don't have the answer yet, start testing your, just test it. See if boundaries you start putting are going to help you answer or get the answers you need. I don't know, but I'm still, I question everything. Before I thought that it was a zero sum. If I'm making money there, somebody else is not making money. Now, there's money for all of us. <laughs> uh, it's a zero sum. Not really. You have to work a lot to make money. Not really. It's a, so thank you. This is what I'm, my way of saying. Thank you for making us <laughs> rethink again. And let's keep exercising. Keep the questions happening because it's what keeps you creative. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. awesome. Thank you, guys. But <laughs> that is so great. Thank you, Andrea, for thinking in another form, right? Uh, having our brain looking at different ways of asking, what am I saying currently? Or what gives me my saying that keeps the bots of my financial ceiling? What, what am I saying, right? Thank you, Andrea. I think this is Cece, sir. Oh, Cece, is that you, Cece? Right? Yeah, right, right Ray? Good morning, um, I love this topic because I, I no longer am equating my value per hour. The value is as much as what people can, what a person is willing to pay. So my hours are more valuable than what someone would tell me at a job, what their starting hour, hourly wage is. So 
these days I'm getting the most because this is what I believe God has for me to get today because I'm no longer in the mindset of a poverty way of thinking. So my mind has changed, has shifted to thinking something greater, which has unlimited opportunities, unlimited money out there. So thank you. And I pass. <laughs> thank you, Cece. Thank you. Uh, you know, some, some, something's opening up for me as you were speaking, Cece. And it is this, like the real juice in this conversation is, is may not be seeing where I'm okay now, meaning I have a better conversation or better something that I'm saying now. Uh, in my experience, that doesn't break up the ceiling. What breaks up the ceiling is the continual asking and the continual looking. What am I saying now? Even though my consciousness has quote unquote changed or transformed, what am I saying now that puts a ceiling on anything in my life? And, and, and here's what's really confronting for me is that whatever results I have in my life right now are a function of what I've been saying. So if it's in my life, it's a function of something I've been saying. Then I can look backwards and say, hmm, maybe this is what I'm saying. And it's not to fix it. And I'm, I'm really hammering this in, okay? It's not to fix the saying. It is to discover the saying and then say something else and then practice saying that something else and looking for the actions consistent with that saying and see what happens. Yes. That's the game. <laughs> Beautiful, Sorrel. This is so, such a great inquiry. One of the things that I, we are committed to every Monday at the Daily Huddle is that you make a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> it is critical that you make a ton of money. You see good people do a lot with a lot of money, right? And, and, and one of the things that money does is gives you this unbelievable resources. And, and with resources, you can do a lot, a lot for others, a lot for yourself, a lot for your children, a lot for, for anything that you care about. So that's why, I hate to say it that way, but that's why Money Matters exists. And mon Monday money, Monday, Mondays, Money Mondays. Yeah, anyways, you get the point. So thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for uh, discovering this inquiry together. Thank you for looking. Thank you for doing whatever you did in your psychology to confront maybe or relook for the first time. What am I saying right now that keeps my financial goals? I hope this was useful for you today. And we leave you ready for tomorrow. Have a phenomenal rest of the day. And here are our seven tenants from Patty Dabronski on how to live an, an amazing renegade life. First, love, love always. Love those who you love, those who you love, love those who you love and those who you don't really love, love. Laugh, laugh out loud, stress your cheeks, laugh as hard as you can, just do it for the heck of it. I mean, it does have a great, great benefits. Stress less, it's really only one life. Really try to look for another one. It's only one life, might as well take it easy. Eat more plant-based, get closer to the trees, hug the trees, eat the trees, eat more plant-based. It gives you your energy back. I know it does, trust me, it does. <laughs> sleep more, sleep six hours, seven hours. Well, six hours, seven hours, I don't know. Get a bonus, get eight hours, sleep a little bit more. Give, give everything away, give your jealousy away, your resentment away, give all of it away. And then finally move every day, 20 minutes, at least every single day, walk in the morning, walk in the afternoons, move every day. I love you. Sorel loves you more. Have a phenomenal rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. See you guys. Tomorrow. Wonderful. Bye -bye.